Greetings, my lovely pen friends. Welcome to another episode of Currently Inked. I'm really glad to have you here for this episode, as I always am, for every episode. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about troubleshooting. And I've got some interesting, specific questions about different kinds of pens. Um, Hopefully, in addition to maybe answering some of the asker's questions as best I can, I'll give you a little bit of insight into my how I approach the troubleshooting process. One of the things I've been thinking about doing is putting together kind of like a, a flow chart of decision making for looking at how to troubleshoot a pen. It's something I haven't seen before and something I really I'm thinking about doing. So maybe I'll work on that when I'm on the plane on my way to the Chicago Pen Show. In any case, let's go ahead and dive in. This first question comes from Sam in New York, who says, I have a Visconti Van Gogh that I took a gamble on off eBay. I can't get it to write for more than about half a page before it gets ink starved and starts skipping and having hard starts. I sent it off to a nibmeister and it came back with the same issue. So I bought a new nib and converter. And even after replacing both, it does the same thing. I also tried different brands of ink, such as Noodler's, Diamine, and Orochizuku. Do you have any idea of what could be causing this issue? Uh, Sam, uh, first of all, I'm sorry. It happens sometimes. Um, I tend to think there might be a little bit of a design flaw with the the nib units that are used in the Van Gogh. I don't know this for sure, um, but I had a little bit of ink starvation problem with both of the ones that I had. I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. Uh, when I did those reviews, because those reviews were some of the among some of the first I ever did, the the Van Gogh and the Salvador Dali. Um, so what I would say is, if you've if you tried the converter, you've tried a different nib, you've tried different inks. Um, my hunch is, and you've sent it to a nib meister. My hunch is the real problem is the feed. So for those who aren't familiar, the the way a, a fountain pen works is basically, as Richard Binder, the, the famous Nimmeister, once said, it is a controlled leak. So as ink flows down the feed channel, air has to get back up into the converter. If there's no air getting into the converter, as the ink flows down the channel, it will start to create a, va- a, a lower pressure area, a vacuum inside the converter, and the ink will stop flowing. So if there isn't a solid ink and air exchange, in that in the feed that can cause ink starvation. Now, if this were a problem with the pen skipping and starting right away, hard starting right away, I'd say look at the, the polish on the nib. It's a little bit problematic. Um, but because you're having issues with with it after half a page, or you say what is it here? You say after yeah about half a page. I, I think it might be the ink and air exchange that's supposed to take place in the feed. So I don't know how you got a hold of a new nib for the Van Gogh, but I would say if you can reach out to Coles of, uh, of London, who is the Visconti distributor here in the United States, and ask them about getting a new feed for the pen, because it may be that the feed is the problem. Uh, if it is, you're going to want to try to get that replaced. If they can't, you might want to send it off to another uh, nibmeister or repair person this it doesn't sound like it's a nib issue to me so i would send it to someone who you think might be comfortable with opening the channels of the feed a little bit to let more air into the converter you might try a couple of other converters as well they don't have to be the visconti branded converters but try a couple of others and see if that helps at all Um, aside from that i think that's probably your best bet and if worse comes to worst you can always just send it back to visconti for repairs and uh you probably have to pay for it since you bought it secondhand, but it's something that you should, uh, you, you may need to do if you can't solve this on your own. Our next question comes from Greg in Scotland, who says, I have a Faber-Castell loom, which I've had since Christmas, but haven't bought a converter for it yet. I've not been using it too often, as whenever I put a cartridge in it, it fits very loosely and leaks out between the grip and the barrel. Is your pen the same, or does it use a strange version of Standard International? Uh, I don't have my pen anymore, so I can't really speak to that. That does sound a little unusual, though. Cartridges usually don't have that problem. I would be interested if you have ever tried a converter on the pen. Uh, If you haven't, uh, maybe, maybe give that a try and see how it would work with bottled ink. 
The fact that the cartridges aren't staying in place makes me wonder if there isn't some damage or something wrong with the post on the feed that's supposed to puncture the cartridge and fill up, you know, and, and hold the, the thing in place. Because if that's been damaged or broken or, you know, there's a manufacturing flaw, it shouldn't be loose. Cartridges usually don't come loose like that. So if you can get a hold of a standard international converter, give that a try. That's what I always used in my pen and I didn't have any problems with it. And I used several standard international converters. If you are a cartridge only kind of person, I'd say reach out to the retailer or to Faber-Castell and see about getting a replacement uh, nib and feed because it sounds like that's going to be the problem and the reason why the, the cartridge won't stay in place. All right, quick moment to thank the sponsor of this episode, Van Ness Pens at vanness1938.com. Now, Van Ness Pens is something of a vanishing breed here in the United States. They are an actual brick and mortar retailer with a beautiful, huge store and a gigantic selection of especially inks and also pens and paper. And uh, they have a great website, vanness1938.com. They have one of the largest ink selections of any retailer anywhere in the world. And they go out of their way to find really unusual uh, a lot of inks. They've got a lot of exclusives to them here in the U.S. So if you're into inks, I highly recommend you head over to vanness1938.com. They are also uh, a regular fixture at pen shows. I know because I often work their tables at some pen shows. And, uh, and it's, it's always fun to see people come and look at all of the inks that they can't find in a lot of places. So uh, head over to vanness1938.com. Thank them for supporting the pen habit if you place an order. And uh, for those of you here in the U.S., orders over $40 come with free shipping. So thanks again to Van Ness Pens for supporting this show. All right, back to the questions. This next question comes from Tristan in Singapore who asks, I recently bought a Pelican M805 and the nib and feed weren't properly aligned. I was wondering how I could align them since the nib unit is not the same as if it were a friction fit where the nib and feed can be easily separated. So uh, Tristan, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I will let you know that first of all, Screw-in nib units, as Pelican nib units are, are in fact friction fit. They're just friction fit to the, <laughs> to the housing, not to the pen itself. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is my Scriptorium Pens uh, Scrivener, I believe. Scrivener? Chronicler. Excuse me, it's a Chronicler. Uh, I had this custom made by Rene Meeks at Scriptorium Pens out of the Mineral C Alumalite. And I asked her if she could make it for a Pelican nib unit. This is, in fact, a Pelican M800 nib unit. And Pelican's nib, oh, Pelican's nib units come in these little plastic housings uh, so that, you know, the nib and feed. Now, I will say that this is not your standard uh, nib, <laughs> nib housing. It's a little bit different. But you'll notice that when I unscrewed it, and I don't know how well this will show up on the video here. Hopefully it's more in focus than my uh, camera is making it look here than my iPad looks. Um, I got the nib and feet out of focus. So you can actually, or out of alignment, you can actually align a nib and feed without having to take the pen out. All you have to do is kind of grab the, the shoulders of the nib and twist it around the feed. Now, you want to be careful you're not squeezing it. You don't want to bend the gold, but you can just kind of, you know, rotate it around the feed and, and get it aligned. In doing so, you may get the, the tines out of alignment, so you'll just want to, you know, if you have a loop, take a quick look, make sure everything is in alignment, and it, it is here, and, uh, and then you should be good to go. Now, you don't have to even take the nib out of the pen to do this, and I often don't because I find that when I go ahead and you can see here, when I go ahead and screw the nib unit in, and I need to grease this before I ink it up again, I actually got the nib slightly out of alignment in the process because of the, the torsion of, of tightening this down. So, yeah, you should be able to get it right back in alignment um, without too much difficulty. Just kind of twist it around the feed, and I think you'll be good to go. All right, the final question for this episode comes from Tamara or Tamara in Colorado who says, I recently discovered that the converter in one of my Montegrappa converters leaked behind the seals. 
Uh, sometimes I see a bit of ink behind the seal on converters, but this converter, but this one was leaking out the back of the converter. Is this a sign of a faulty converter or is it just something that happens? I've cleaned it thoroughly and put the converter back together, but I'm also thinking of buying a new converter. Can a converter fail? Let me answer the last question first with a resounding, yes, it can. And I complained about this a couple of episodes back when I started talking about the converters that come with sailor pens. Sailor makes some glorious pens and they absolutely cheap out on their converters. And I'd say probably two thirds of the converters of sailor converters that I've gotten have leaked out the back. Um, and as I joked in that episode, the last thing you want is rear end leakage. It's, <laughs> there's never a situation where rear end leakage is a good thing. Um, so, so yeah, converters absolutely can fail. Now, a couple of things that you can do. First of all, if you are going to get serious about fountain pens at all, you might as well have a stash of five or 10 extra converters sitting around, especially the standard international converters. I have probably five or so extras sitting around. I ordered them from Goulet pens or someone, you know, probably, I probably Goulet is usually where I get my converters from. Um, and they're five bucks a piece. I got a piece. I got the Schmidt K5 converters and they fit 95% of the pens I want to use them in. But if you take your, the, the one thing that may have happened is if the seal around that little rubber stopper on the piston inside the converter is flawed or is dry or isn't forming a solid seal with the inner wall of the converter itself, um, a little bit of silicone grease on the inside of the converter could help that. Now, I tend to be pretty leery. Once a converter has failed on me, unless it is because of something I did, like taking a part to clean it and not putting it back together properly, I tend to basically, you know, you, you get one chance with me. Uh, you know, if as a converter, you get one chance because once you crap out on me, I can't trust you again. And life is too short to deal with converters you can't trust. You know, I don't want to have a pen in my shirt pocket and discover a big ink stain in my, in my shirt pocket. So I tend to be a little more particular about that, but I'd say give the, you know, disassemble the, the converter, put a little silicone grease around the rubber ring on the stopper and on the inner walls of the converter, make sure everything's tightened down, maybe a little silicone grease along the little collar that screws onto the back of the converter. And that should probably do it. If it still leaks after that, the converter's just gone bad. And it happens. It's not the end of the world. They're $2 to $5, depending on what kind you get and where you get them. So I just get another one and make sure it fits and go to town. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Currently Inked. I'm really glad to have you here. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down in the comment section here on YouTube. Or if you're watching on penhabit.com, you can leave your comments over there as well. I do read every comment people leave. I don't always respond. Sometimes a response isn't necessary. Uh, sometimes I don't respond because I'm just a jerk and, you know, <laughs> I, I'm a busy guy, so I don't always get to respond as often or as much as I would like to. Uh, also, I've been getting a lot of questions of stuff I've talked about before. So I have a frequently asked question link on penhabit.com that I've started filling out. And it doesn't have all of the stuff in there that I want to put in there. But I would love to, if you have questions that you hear a lot from new users or questions that you think would benefit from being in a frequently asked questions page, leave them in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear kind of what some of your thoughts are because I, you know, I'm human. I get kind of tired of answering the exact same questions over and over again. So I would love to be able to direct new users who are just getting started to the frequently asked questions page. And keep in mind, I'm not looking for questions about specific pens. I'm more looking for questions about practices, methods, uh, you know, one, one I get is, does ink go bad? Or what does bad ink look like? Um, that's a question I get all the time, especially because I've got so much ink behind me. So if you've got questions like that, or you had questions like that when you were just getting started and still hear them a lot, please leave them in the comments as I try to flesh out that frequently asked questions section. So thank you again for joining me here on The Pen Habit, and we will see you again soon.
Bye.